Okay, 2016, Amy 1, question 15. Uh, and again, full disclosure here, this one, I couldn't do much more than draw the diagram for. I was completely stumped. So um, I went to the great website, Art of Problem Solving. They have a bunch of uh, solutions. I think three or four posted for this, worked my way through, through it. Um, so I'll present someone else's solution here. Don't think this is my work. Uh, but I can draw a diagram, that much I can do. So we have two circles, W1 and W2. And so let's draw those. W1, W2. Uh, they intersect at X and Y. Actually, let me change those colors so it'll be easier to see once things get crazy. So we have this point here, x, this point here, y. There's a tangent here, and that intersects like this. We have point A on circle 1, point B on circle 2, or circle omega 2. Um, okay, and uh, we have a circle omega passing through A and B um, and intersecting W1 and W2 again, so we have another circle going like this, and at first I thought, okay, we'll have a circle coming this way, but I want to make the other intersection collinear through y, so I realized, okay, I need to have it be the circle intersecting like this. And I swear it's a circle. There we go. Lovely circle. And so that's going to intersect here and here. And um, that's going to be at, we have d here and we have c here. Okay, so now they give us a few uh, segment length. They say that XC will be 67. They say that XD will be 37. And um, they give us XY is 47. Okay, and, and, you know, when I, when I tried to sell this myself, I put in a few things, so I was like, okay, I can, you know, try to connect some stuff up. I've got this here, I got this here, and I can try to do um, this here and get some triangles going on, and this is a line, I know it doesn't quite look like it goes through Y, but this should be, um, D, Y, and C are collinear, they tell us that right here. And so the first thing that I didn't know, there's something called, I think it's the uh, the radical segment theorem or something that would say that these points, because of the way we've defined this, will um, coincide at some point. And it seems reasonable enough looking at the diagram and say, okay, yeah, maybe they do meet out there. And we'll call that point E, and by we I mean the solution on our problem solving did, so I'll stick to that. So if you look at the site, you'll see that it's pretty much the same. And, you know, this is all stuff that I didn't come up with now. We have three intersecting circles, and that means that we have in here what are called cyclic uh, quadrilaterals. So we have X, B, C, Y, we have A, X, Y, D, and we have E, A, X, B, which will be cyclic for a reason we'll see shortly. Um, cyclic just means that the quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle. And there's another theorem that I didn't know called Mikkel's theorem that says this. If we have um, intersecting, or if we have intersecting circles with two cyclic quadrilaterals, we actually end up getting 
congruent angles. So in here, this XEA will be congruent to XCB will be congruent to XDY. And these other ones, for the same type of reason, will also be congruent. So it sort of goes around in a fun little pinwheel effect. Okay, now next thing, I can connect this up and because of the way this works, let me get the correct color. I'm going to erase this in a second because it's getting to be a mess. Sorry, I'm not going to erase everything but erase what I'm writing here. So in here, this angle and this angle uh, subtend the same arc, meaning that these two are congruent. I'll mark that up. So this is congruent with the two arcs. And similarly, this angle and this angle subtend the same, arc, same arcs in this circle here. So these are congruent with the one arc. And what we get now is that we have a parallelogram right here. We'll label this as point S again because that's the way that was labeled on Art of Problem Solving. No, necess no necessary reason to do that. And so because of alternate interior angles, this angle here being congruent to this angle here, we have a parallelogram. And that gives us a lot of nice stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do here, and this is where all the computation comes in. Not only do we have this parallelogram, we have um, similar triangles. You see this triangle I'm sort of going over right here. I guess I'll, I'll shade it once. I'll, I'll erase the yellow because it's getting more and more scribbly. The, this triangle is similar to this triangle over here by angle angle. You can see, you know, one arc to one arc, two arcs to two arcs, which means that um, dx over ex from this triangle here will equal ex over cx from this triangle over here, which means that ex squared equals cx times dx. Well, we're given, well, I guess we call it xd and uh, let me see. So we're given xd and we're given xc, uh, same thing. So I'll put these in, so that's going to equal 67 times 37, and I did not do this work, alright, so let me do it, 67 times 37, you get 9, bring up the 4, 7 times 6 is 42, plus 4, 46, 1 carry the 2, 18, 19, 20, so it looks like, unless I messed up yet again, that that should be um, 2,479. I want to hope I didn't mess that up. Okay, so that's great, but how does that help us? Well, now we also know that by a little bit of algebra difference of squares, xy squared, sorry, to the bigger one, well, it doesn't really matter, xe squared minus xy squared is going to equal xe minus xy times xe plus xy, difference of squares, xe, which is this piece right here, minus xy, which is this piece right here. Well, because this is a parallelogram, es and sy are congruent. So xe, which goes from e to s and then a little bit more, minus this portion, so we're going to sort of cut it off here, 
and that's going to be twice this xs. So 2xs. xe plus xy is just all the way from e to y. Now e to y is just 2 um, times Oh, let me see, make sure it's right. 2 times s to y, because e to y, again, diagonal of a parallelogram, uh, they're bisected, so we have 2xs. Well, let me do the same alphabetical or 2sx times 2sy. And now, for the same. Uh, for the same similar triangle reason we made an argument up here about, we have similar triangles in here. Now I'm going to try to mark them. It's way too small to see. But in here, I get the 4 because 2 times 2. And Sx times Sy is going to equal Sa squared. So I'm going to write down so that's S A squared. That's the same thing as 2 S A squared, which is 2 times S A is A B. And lo and behold, that's what we're looking for, miraculously enough. So now I can use this information. We figure out what X E squared is. So xe squared is 2,479. xy is 47, so I do minus 47 squared. And I better do that work. Again, hopefully I don't mess it up. Gotta love all the uh, weird stuff in the mess of multiplication. 7 times 7 is 49. 4 times 7 is 28, plus 4 is going to give me 32. Um, 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 is 18. And so in this one, I would get, so this is still 2,479, I add these down, so minus, I get a 9, I get a 0, carry the 1, 4 plus 8 is 2, carry the 1, add on 2, and that is a 0, not a 6. So, 2, 4, 7, 9, minus 2, 2, 0, 9, gets me 270. And that's apparently how you'd solve this. Uh, I was completely stumped after drawing this. But I understand what's going on in here. If you have questions, feel free to ask, or you can look and see there were a few other methods to prove on our problem solving. And uh, I'll probably go into a few other videos and maybe some AMC stuff next.